an example problem like an exercise okay so uh, an example uh, in <clears throat> but just let me write just an example okay uh, you guys will see this is what uh, you can apply so conditional probability type question <clears throat> uh let me just uh, uh draw uh maybe not a, a yeah let me just draw a table it's much better like that so okay so there is a table here columns here and so there will be like two things simultaneously and uh, one of them is going to be symptoms and uh, the other is disease okay so <clears throat> uh that's so we will see so here is yes here it's no and then you have the total okay and again same thing here so the type of question this is going to be is so you have symptom for a certain disease uh, and then that, that's not the same as having the disease uh, but if you have the symptom then the probability is more of having the disease and so things of that kind okay um, yeah so let's let's yeah let me write some numbers first i'll write the numbers then we'll try to explain okay one and then this is 11 <clears throat> threading the exact number so that there is no and then yeah this will be the same and then here you can see five nines one more nine nine and then oh, five seven that's some Okay, so basically, uh, there is <clears throat> sorry, there is one person, let's say, who has the symptoms and has the disease. Okay, <clears throat> and then there is one person. There are ten people who have the symptom, so they are in yes in the symptom uh, thing, uh, but they don't have the disease. I should not actually be needing to explain this, but. I'm just saying this, okay? And rest, you should interpret on your own because the question is also about <clears throat> quickly uh, interpreting the data. And so this is the table, okay? What you want, and you can assume that this is a random sample, okay? This is a random sample. So maybe I can just say random sample. So from here, uh, you can infer the probabilities. What is what I'm trying to say? Okay, you can infer the probabilities from here. <clears throat> now, what I want to ask is, what is the probability that someone has the disease given that they have the symptoms? So, yeah, the natural thing. Because uh, that's what you want to know. Someone has a disease given that they have the symptoms. So I'm not writing it in words because part of the thing is to be able to get it from the table okay <clears throat> so this is just an exercise this is not even a problem or anything it's just <clears throat> sorry So, for example, what will be the probability that someone has the disease? Just the probability of this thing. Can any one of you say this? Yes, perfect. I just wanted to see if you have interpreted the question clearly. 
I don't know if it's one lakh or it will be 10, 10 lakh something. Yeah. Okay. So the question, then we understand the question. No. Huh. Oh, no, no. So uh, on the screen, I have whatever I've written. This is basically I've written this for everyone, this only. Because uh, the goal is to do a small example, but just through a table, not writing everything in words. Okay. So, yeah. So let me then say it. Uh, so the point is that there is this table and uh, this, for example, uh, this, this number suggests that there are this many people who don't have the symptoms. So that's what that column represents, right? Not in the symptoms thing don't have the symptom and they don't have the disease. So there are that many people who don't have the symptoms and they don't have the disease. Okay. So that makes the table clear, right? For example, there is this one. So that's the total number of people who have the symptoms, right? That's the, because that's in the column, it's the total and uh, they have the disease. So that's, that's what that one means. Okay. Total number of people who have the disease and yeah and have the symptoms oh no no so so um yeah <clears throat> no one minute uh so i'm just a little confused myself so what will uh this one represent so this one will certainly represent the total number of people who have the disease yeah that is the safe interpretation i suppose so <clears throat> we can we can keep that yeah Okay. And so uh, is then, is it clear? But the second thing I want to say is that you should treat this as a random sample. That's the word they may use in the exam. Okay. A random sample means that you can infer the probabilities from here. Okay. Just like here, Raghav has said that the probability of someone having the disease is one by this much, because these are the total number of people. <clears throat> right. Okay, you have gone to the RK. Okay, so just give us some time. Just once, yeah. Uh, maybe I can ask you for the explanation. Uh, so this is the total number of people, and uh, yeah, and this is the total number of people who have the disease. So you can infer the probability from here because it's a random sample. Okay. So so let's let's just give us one more minute before someone says uh, solution. I will ask. So just to understand the question, then I will just come. Because I wanted to do an exercise in Bayes' theorem just before we, just to make sure. Yeah, what's the probability of someone having the symptom? 11 by 10 lakh. Yeah, because this is the... Yes, right. So let me just check because this is the total number of uh, people who have the symptom, right? And uh, the total is this. Okay, so yeah, and what's the next question? <clears throat> Probability of the disease and the symptom. Uh, yes, because the disease is a subset of the symptom, right? So it will just be probability of the disease itself, right? Uh, yeah, the probability of disease and symptom uh, is should be the same as the probability of the disease. And so that is one by 10. Nine. But uh, uh, you can also infer it from the graph concretely. <clears throat> um, so there are, or maybe I should have mentioned it. There are this many people and there is one person who has the uh, one minute, one second. One person who has, yeah, yeah, that's clear, right? Because yes, yes is one. Yes, symptom and yes, disease is one, then total is this. Yeah, so it's clear. So I guess now the question, something different. Okay. Yeah, this should be high, right? Because given the symptom, having the disease should not be one by. But okay, so Adish, is the question clear to you now? Okay, so now you should tell me what is not clear. 
Yeah, so the, okay, so we have to find the probability of someone having the disease given that they have the symptoms, right? So you can see that all these probabilities we are getting, right? All these different probabilities, probability of the disease, probability of the symptom, and similarly, you could get other things, probability of, you know, symptom, but no, not disease, uh, yeah. No, no, that's fine. Yeah, 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 that's right. But so is the is so what we are asking is it clear now? Yeah, because that's just all the probabilities are given, but they're given in a slightly indirect way, slightly indirect way, not very indirect, right? Okay. So now uh, I I know so some of you have got the solution already, and all of you can get by just applying. But let's do this. Okay. So let me not apply as I said. I won't apply the base formula directly, because let's just uh, derive this as if we don't, didn't know the formula. <clears throat> so let's write the definition of conditional probability. So this means having the disease, so I'll just shorthand DNS and having the symptom. Okay, uh, no, uh, yes, because this is uh, going to be our total because given that you have the symptoms, right? So our total set is inside the set, inside the set where you have the disease. So we're going to take intersection with that. And uh, we're going to divide by the total. That's basically normalizing by the total. Yeah, this is the definition of conditional probability. Yeah, now let us see um, what we know, what we need to find. So uh, D intersection S is, uh, is known. So we don't have to worry about it. 10 lakh. Yeah. Yeah, now this thing we don't know. Okay, so whenever you don't know a certain probability, so, because it's like an instructive example, so I'm just saying it, okay. Uh, though some of you already know it and already have got the answer. <clears throat> Sorry? Uh, oh. oh. Right, so, P of the symptom Ah, so then it's already given. So just one second. So then what was the question? So then the question is becomes trivial. Sorry, one minute. Uh, <sighs> probability of having the symptoms. Yes, in the symptom is 11. Oh God. Yeah. Uh, so then what was they thinking? Is it correct? And the answer is also correct. It is the one by 11 only. <clears throat> yeah. And this is the answer also. Um, okay. So then let us, uh, um, sorry, then I just made a mess. Let us try to calculate the probability of having the symptoms uh, given you have the disease, but then that's one. So there's nothing to calculate there as well. Just a second. Okay. Just a second. That's a huge. What I was thinking is we will calculate the probability of having the symptoms, you know, by you know into two parts, having the disease and not having the disease, and applying uh, just you know. So what I was having in mind is the symptoms given that we have the disease, plus uh, symptoms given that we don't have the disease. Okay, and this two we can calculate, and this will be p of s, right? And uh, that we can again calculate by applying conditional probability but then it's directly given, so we don't need to do it. Yeah. Um, so then I can't do anything. Maybe, maybe we basically we gave too much, maybe. Yeah. Uh, then uh, let's try to do another example, sorry. This was a, <clears throat> okay, fine. I mean, okay. Yeah. 
Uh, sorry, let's let's do one more example. So this. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what should we do in that case? Anyone? Yeah. So if you, if your total set is an interval or in is some is some region, is if your total set is some region and your favorable set is a sub region then the yes because that is the natural way to assign finiteness to finite numbers length by length area by area yeah okay so the definition of probability will change from context to context right in in this case uh, when your sample space is an in, is a region then the interpretation would be area by area, which is a natural thing, right? Area is the next thing that we go for. Simple. Uh, <clears throat> more interest. Formally, no. So, uh, well, for formally, what do you mean formally? How will you state it? Because, uh, because I mean, your your total your total set of possibilities is a region, right? That's a well defined region. And your set of favorable outcomes is also a well-defined region. So then there is no problem, right? So, so if the total set is a rectangle and if your favorable region is a circle or inside the circle, whatever, then uh, it's, it's clear, right? That the areas are, yeah. So then the definition of probability of favorable, probability of favorable is, is area of favorable by the area of total. <clears throat> this is, I mean, this is good enough for us to work with, right? Yeah, I mean, all this can be said in some general way called measure, but there is no point in saying about that. That's why I'm not saying, okay? <clears throat> yeah, so let's not get into the thing. Like, uh, like there was one question in the test that I had asked, right? What's the probability that the point is continuous in a monotonic function, right? So there also basically, you know, the interpretation was that you take the area, right? Area of the countable set, area of the countable set, let's say Q by the area of R. But here, even the area doesn't make sense, right? Because the area is also infinite. So then what did we say? You take it intersection with some finite thing because it's everywhere it is uniform, you know, kind of. And you do it like this. Okay, so this is interpretation, right? Area of countable sets, area, so on. And <clears throat> there are many other uh, things like this. Like if your set is a set of natural numbers, right? Like if your if your um, um, if your sample space, so if your sample sample space is is a set of natural numbers. Yeah. And let's a question what's the probability that the number that a number is prime, then how would you do right? Then again, both the sets are infinite. So then how would you do it? Right? You cannot take infinite by infinite, right? And that's a probability that a uh, number is prime. Well, I, um, <clears throat> don't ask me the answer to this question. I don't know, uh, but there are other simple questions that can be asked like pair of numbers versus probability that pay, pick pair of, uh, Number so then your sample space will be n cross n. What's the probability that the pair is co-prime? Okay, but those kind of things, right? If if you're picking from the all of n, then how would you make sense? Then you cannot just say uh, number of primes, right? Number of primes by 
uh, total number of sample space n because both is infinite. It doesn't make sense. But in this case, it also does not make sense to say that you take intersection with one to hundred or one to thousand. Does it make sense? It doesn't make sense because that doesn't give us a right sense, right? Because that distribution keeps changing as you go along, right? It kind of becomes lesser or whatever, right? You see my point, right? It becomes, so it changes. So you cannot really um, use this. So this is bad notation, right? Uh, bad, bad uh, definition, you could say. So then we change the definition, right? Then we, then we change the definition. So how do we change the definition? We say, well, number of numbers less than N, that is just N, and number of primes less than N. Okay, and then you take the limit of this as n tends to infinity. If the limit also doesn't exist, then we'll think of some other definition. Okay, so the definition keeps changing, or rather, these can be all said in a unified way. There is one, but uh, no, I don't know if it goes to zero. Oh, yeah, yeah, I. Yes, yeah, if n, uh, yeah, it should go to zero, right? Yeah, um, but then number of primes. Yes, yeah, certainly it goes to zero, but that's a different thing. I mean, then, I mean, this is just a, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, this goes to zero, but yeah, you get the point. Okay, so this is the difference. You have to ch keep changing. So if nothing is given, you have to use your common sense and the natural notion. If something is given, then it is good. Yeah. So it is. Okay. Yeah. So then let's just do one more example. So because this example kind of failed, so it was uh, because I, did, I was not paying attention. So that's why. It failed. Yeah. So once again, there is a table. So this is the second uh, problem. Let's say trying to apply Bayes theorem because I felt that I should do some standard problems, even though uh, some of you will know it, but still I, as from my side, I should do it at this point. Um, and we will all learn something hopefully. So again, there are some uh, types of uh, tools or something. So it's machines, so we have a machine and uh, that's the conditions. So we have three kinds of machines. Okay, so then we have the total. Okay, and uh, so either they are defective condition or they are flawless. I think everything will come out from here. That is a problem. And then you have the total. Okay. Um, yeah. So in A, there are 10 defective, 190 flawless. And similarly, you can just write some numbers. So, but uh, yeah, in the end, match the answer. So, I wondered, and then there are total number of defective is 24, and there are this many flawless ones and so that is thousand. And obviously both the rotors are the same. Okay, now what do we want? So, um, but it's, I was not, I'm not, I was not prepared with this question. So I'll have to just, uh, okay. Yeah. So now you are picking, uh, um, let me mention this picking, pick a, a machine at random. Okay. Maybe the table is helping us to kind of infer the probabilities. So we are not needing to apply the base theorem. That's what may be happening. But anyways, yeah, that's, then that's the case. Yeah. So then what's the probability? What's the probability that it is machine C? Okay. What's the probability? Uh, that um, uh, maybe an item of uh, machine C, a copy of machine C, there are five copies of machine C. What's the probability that a copy of machine C is picked? Okay. Given 
uh, that it is defective, I suppose. Yeah, Give, given that it is defective. <laughs> yeah, so again, the problem that is happening is uh, that it's everything is here in the table, right? Yeah. Uh, so because it's no, no, one minute. So there are five. No, but it is given the yeah. So then if it's given that it is defective, then it is 24 is the total. And then five are Yeah, so basically from the table, we are able to infer this, right? So it's a failed, um, so I don't know what I'm doing today. <laughs> yeah, because when I looked at the examples, you know, they calculated it, but uh, yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, leave it then. That's it. Yeah, that, that's, so I just start, okay. Okay, anyway, so we learned to infer the table then. <laughs> what else can I say? <laughs> Let's move to the actual questions then, okay? Um, so I'll just close this base there. Just this. Uh, you guys can uh, see the question then. So maybe I can just share it here. Only I don't. Want, I'm not going to write the question. Already wasted enough time. Uh, so how do I? Then I write. No, but then I can't write. So that's fine. So uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to write the question. So you guys can see the first uh, first problem okay let's do this only the ones that i gave yesterday so this uh, lucky losers casino that problem okay uh, let's try to do that problem okay so basically we have um, five die okay five we have five dice right one of them is loaded okay one of them is loaded so can anybody say the rest of the question in, in a brief language without mentioning all the words that are there? <clears throat> yeah, no, that's, yeah, that's right. Loaded one has probability half of, of getting uh, maybe six of getting six others have e i mean others equal okay uh, but then what is the hmm, yeah that's fine then what is the actual uh, what is the rest of the question yeah so a die is picked at random right a die so among those five, okay, is picked at random, okay, rolled 10 times. And uh, let's say, let's say that a K rolled 10 times and K of them, exactly K of them. Yeah, K of them uh, turn, uh, turn six, okay. So basically from here, we want to find the probability that the chosen, that the die was uh, uh, the loaded one. Okay. So yeah, find the probability that uh, the loaded dice, this should be dice was picked. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's, that's the same question, try right? to see. That's, I understand what you're saying. Ha ha ha. So the question is that, uh, so yeah. So the question is how many times should he, sh should uh, he, uh, should, should 10 come up for him to be at least 90% sure, right? For him to be at least 90% sure that the die was loaded. So basically there you want to calculate. So there it's given to you that the probability that the die, that the loaded die was picked is more than nine by 10. Right. And you want to find out how many times you want to get the six. Right. Yeah. Uh, so this. Yeah. 
came how many times so how many times six comes up how many times six must come up for him to be sure that for so that how many times six should come up so that the probability that the die was loaded was at least 9 by 10 right i mean so that's the same question as uh, let's say that if six comes up k times then what's the probability right of uh, fact that it was loaded die does everybody see that that's the same question right because then you will get this probability in terms of k and then you can make that bigger than 9 by 10 and find the k right let's just solve this question okay so the loaded die was picked uh, given that uh, k of them uh, turned 6 and then basically this probability you want to make this more than 9 by 10 right and then you calculate the k but that's okay that's easy just calculate this probability So there are five dice. One of them is picked at random. So that picking is at random. Okay. Uh, and we want to calculate the probability that it is loaded. Given that you get k of them, uh, k of them turn out to be uh, six. Like the more of them turn out to be six, the more the probability is that you have picked the loaded one. Yeah, but if all 10 turn out to be six, that doesn't mean that you certainly picked the loaded one. That's not true. But... Yeah, so anyone has done this? This was given. Hello, anyone? Yes. Yes, so that's what, right? So you want to, the, the interpretation of the question is what's the probability? What, I mean, how many times K should count so that, so that the probability is more at least nine by 10, right? So you assume that it came up K times and you find the probability, right? You assume that six came up K times and you find the probability that it was a loaded die given this condition. And let's just calculate the probability. Then this is the probability that you want to be more than nine by 10, right? Does everybody agree with that? No, but the K is fixed. It's arbitrary, right? Um, if I'm correct, we fix the K. I mean, in, not fixed in the sense that the K is an arbitrary number, right? Uh, you see the point. Yeah. So, I mean, it could happen. So let's just imagine, okay. Let's imagine that the probability that, uh, let's just loaded die was picked given that six came up once, one of them, uh, was six. Okay. Let's say that this probability turns out to be three by 10. Okay. Then, I mean, if you, you can do the problem like this also, I mean, you can take K equal to one and do find the probability, then you take k equal to two and the probability, then you see when the probability jumps to more than nine by 10, you report that as the answer. And it'll take quite some time. Okay, we don't want to do like that, but I'm just saying, for example, two of them came out to be six, right? Let's say this probability was seven by 10, you see? So the first time the probability becomes more than nine by 10, that's your answer, all right? But I mean, that you will get directly, right? If you can find this probability in terms of k, Right. And then the minimum K will be that one, right? The minimum K for which the probability for which this becomes more than nine by 10. So you will get some, so this for this, maybe some K square, probably K square will not, yeah, K square can come here. K square minus K plus two by some, some K plus three comes up. And then you want this to be at least, and then you find K that this should be the minimum number of uh, you know, time you should have turned up for me 
for this probability to be at least n better. Is the plan clear? Please tell me, then maybe I can or others or I can try to say it in another way. Or we can just go ahead and try to find this probability and then the wording of the question is the main thing in this, maybe. Ah, okay, okay, that's yeah, but that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That huh, huh, yeah, that is okay. No, that's right. And we're not, we're not going to check it that we're not going to do that at all. That's the whole point, right? That's why we have the formula. So we can find this in terms of K, this probability. Let's try to find this in terms of K and then we will have a more clear picture. So what is this? This is the probability that the dice was loaded. And K of them turned six. Just try to just focus on calculating this probability now. Okay. This, yeah, the star. Haha, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This should be something like that, right? But uh, let me write the full thing because this is just. Yeah. Then we want the probability that um, k of them. Yeah, so we'll we'll see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. No. 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 It should be one by two. Shouldn't be one by ten. But I will see. Okay. Uh, k k of them k of them turned. Uh, six. So far, so good. Just the definition I'm writing. Okay. Now, uh, this one. So the this one will be what? First of all, like two two uh, steps, right? We have the die has to be loaded. That's um, one by five. Is that clear? That condition is one by five, and then k of them have to turn to be six. Now see. If you're doing it 10 times, right? If you're doing it 10 times, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, key of them had to be turned out to be 6. What does that mean? Basically, first of all, you have to figure out how many ways this can happen. How many ways this can happen? That is 10 to scale. I think is that right? No, in the sense that you should you should calculate that first, right? Because I mean those six those k sixes can come in several ways. That those k sixes can come in several orders, and all of them are different. Right? All of them are different. No, so this one by five is a probability that the die was loaded. Right? And then from the, okay, then that's okay. Now you roll it 10 times. So 10 choose K, right? So K of those places, we get six, right? And the rest of the place, we don't care. So we just see others. That's why it's just 10 choose K. Okay, otherwise we'll have to take a lot of cases. Okay. So in each of those 10 choose K, in each of those k places, maybe this place, this place, this place, and the last place, we want six to come. So that will be half to the power k. Okay. If we need 10 choose k because it is different, right? The order in which, because I mean, these events are different, right? So suppose you're rolling it three times and one six you want to come. You want one six to come up. So what that's one six could come in the beginning, it could come up here or it could come up here in the end. So aren't these three events different? Does everybody see that? This is a standard thing when you're tossing coins and so on and so on. 
it this is the thing you have to always consider the different ways in which it comes because this thing otherwise the probabilities won't even add up to one right like one half half square that thing doesn't add up to one but um, but with the chooses and it adds up to one right you can yeah okay like you understand right n choose zero times one to the power n half to the power n and choose one times half to the power n that thing will totally anyways it a problem has to be there but yeah <clears throat> okay this and then in the rest in the rest anything would come up but the probability of anything else coming up is also half it's not 1 by 10 because you are allowing anything else you're not saying i should get a 5 i should get a 6 no one can do that case work and make life hard and necessarily but that's not what we are interested in right anything else coming up is fine so that's again half to the power and this is the feature of many probability questions <clears throat> please correct me because i can be wrong if you feel i am uh, you should correct me and firstly obviously if you don't understand some step Five by ten. Ha! Huh, yes, yeah. Because just just think simply that the rest of the prob because uh, the rest of the probability is half. You can't do this by uh, number of other other numbers, which is five numbers and so on. Because probability is not uniform, but it's clearly rest clearly have probability half the rest of the numbers. That's important. So this seems to be the numerator to me. Okay. Yes. So what? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Huh. Yeah. Half. Oh, so let him. So let him complete. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let Rasu Pro complete. Yeah. Yeah. no because you are allowing i can i will i can show it through that also if you take 1 by 10 you'll get the same answer but you'll have to take more cases but the way i am saying is uh, except for those places in which so let's say these are the places in which six turns up so let's just take a case Okay, six turns up in these places, but in these places you are allowing for anything else, anything to turn up, right? So what is the probability that anything comes in the first roll? I mean, anything other than six, half. And what's? Yes, it's just a step by step thing. I roll the dice once. What's the probability that I get anything other than six, half? Okay. You, if you one can do it by one by ten also, but then you have to do, uh, you know, number of uh, twos, number of threes, a lot of casework maybe, or maybe not. I don't know, but and then you get a summation identity. That's how a lot of the summation identities are made up, made. Okay, so by <laughs> doing a probability problem in a hard way and then in an easy way, and that's true actually. It just. Okay, so this is a fundamental thing. Uh, this is done in a lot of uh, problems. So now, uh, if it's not Chandan, is it clear to you? Uh, ask me. If some we uh, think uh, what is not clear. If someone, yeah, something is not clear, then we'll do the. Got it right. So, okay. So it's now it's up to you guys to ask me. So now the denominator. What's the probability that k of them? Turn six. This is just plain probability in the sense. Well, it may be hard to calculate, but the point is there are no conditions in this. This one, someone has to tell me, and don't tell the answer. That doesn't matter when you tell the answer. Tell the some steps. Yeah. I made a mistake in the first two questions. I should have just I should have written the table. That is just uh, 
yeah because that gives away the thing but it's good i like interpreting the table and so on okay simple okay so let's see let's see yeah last row ha huh. yes you have to do that right yeah yes right so raghav you see you cannot you shouldn't take okay it's not you cannot take average it's because i mean you understand but this is where you have to split this is this is the case work you have to split the problem into two cases because this is where the distinction is right so if you split it into two cases right this is equal to um yeah k six is gi not given so that is not given because nothing is given here okay k six is and uh, loaded which we have already calculated okay and plus has to be a plus k six is and unloaded unloaded or unbiased whatever oh, yeah un unbiased one second i'll just plug in the charger okay but you see now you can uh, calculate this easily and now you can calculate it easily it's a simple calculation but that is the problem yeah oh shit <laughs> I, i disconnected 